Hi, in this tutorial we're looking at a relatively new piece of software that can certainly add a bit of sparkle to our images. It's called Topaz Sharpen AI and it's available both as a plugin for Photoshop or as a standalone program. It's also available with a free, I think it's a 30 day um, trial edition so you can try it out and see how it works before you make up your mind and, and purchase the software. It's proving very useful for working with astronomical images, although the program itself was actually generally uh, developed for mainstream photography. It's a fairly simple interface, and uh, once you've downloaded and installed the program, in this case I'll be using it as a, 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 as a plugin for Photoshop, but as I say, it is available as a standalone program as well. The image we can see on the screen at the moment is uh, a Hydrogen Alpha image of the Eagle Nebula in um, the constellation of Serpens. The images were taken with a Hydrogen Alpha filter and that, in that way we can capture some nice interesting structural details within the nebula and of course the famous pillars of creation. And this is a very good subject to apply Topaz Sharpen AI to. Initially the way we would start the plugin would be to come up to where it says filter and once it's installed you come down to where it says Topaz Labs but as you can see on the screen it's greyed out at the moment. The reason for this is that for Sharpen AI to work it has to be an RGB image and the image we've got on the screen at the moment is a 16-bit grayscale image but that's not a problem it's not a showstopper in any way shape or form we just have to convert the image first and the way to do that is to come up to where it says image the first option is mode just come across to um, RGB color and then you won't see any changes to the image except just up here in the in the file information header if you like it's now changed to RGB and now Sharpen AI should recognize that image very readily so once again we come up to filter and then down to Topaz Labs which is now available and then just come across to where it says Topaz Sharpen AI now this will invoke the plugin and at the moment it's kind of taken over the screen but Photoshop's still running in the background. Now once the software opens it's just going to generate a preview and the idea is that you can drag the image around and you have this dividing line which effectively shows you the before state of the image on the left and the after state on the right. Now these later versions of Sharpen AI I've got an auto setting on which is just over here and that the software does a quick sort of preamble on your image and comes up with its own suggestions but for now what we'll do um, I'll explain these other features in a minute but we'll, just to show you how the program works we'll click on here where it says sharpen and once again you'll see the preview being generated every time you make a change to the program a new preview is generated but hopefully you can see quite clearly what it's done to the image now as I said, this uh, line that you can click on shows you the before and after and this is the before state and as you can see on the image it's actually a very high quality image um, as we would expect to take with a Chile 1 telescope under very good sky conditions. But watch what happens when we click on the dividing line, the before and after as I move the, image, uh, move the line across hopefully you can see just how much sharper the image has become it's incredible how um, the detail has really been brought forward. Now, there's a couple of things you have to bear in mind. One is that if there's any noise in the image, um, it will sharpen the noise as well. You may end up with some fairly strange artifacts. If, for example, you have any hot pixels in the image, it will scale uh, or sharpen those quite dramatically. And that's not necessarily a good thing but we can deal with that in other ways which I'll show you in a minute. So for a first look um, it's done a fairly good job. I'm going to click apply and what it will do it will create a new state in Photoshop with the sharpening applied to it. So here on the screen this is the newly sharpened version and it's done a really good job of, for example, showing structural details in the pillars of creation. But another reason I've chosen this image to, to demonstrate this software is 
it's got these incredibly wispy and enigmatic Bok globules. We've seen these before in my previous tutorials on Photoshop using layers where we sharpen some of these up but hopefully you can see the image on the screen. Sharpen AI has done a remarkably good job of bringing these into prominence and also areas like up here. I can show you the, uh, the before and after states so just off screen I'll, I'll click back to an earlier version and although it's fairly subtle it's definitely bringing some of these into prominence and particularly as I said these are uh, these areas around here the main Eagle Nebula itself this is the before state and the after state and really has done a remarkably good job and as you can see that was with a fairly straightforward application of the software so let's go back and have another look at the software in a little bit more detail. I'll close this image down. I'll go back to an earlier state for now. Just go back to where it was converted to an RGB image and we'll invoke the software again. So once again, just up to filter, down to Topaz Labs and then across to Sharpen AI. As before, the software starts up and this is where we came in. Now, we can have a look around the software. It's fairly basic, but there's a few additional controls we can call upon, which will certainly improve the image. So let's just get the Eagle Nebula up like that as before. And we can start off by assessing the level of zoom control on the image. That's available up here. If you click up where it says 100% at the moment, if you click on that, you can go to 50%, 100%, 200%, up to 400% even. But I recommend for now, 100% does seem to work fairly well. If you want to see the image a bit more critically, you can zoom in further. We'll, we'll stick with 100% for now. As you come down, this box here shows the full image and the, the white rectangle is showing the bit of the nebula that we're actually seeing on the screen. So if I zoom in, you'll see that white rectangle has got even smaller. But as I say, we'll stick with 100% for now. Then as you come down here, um, we've got an auto button and this um, is used to automatically select one of three modes here. If you click on the mode question mark there, it, it says determines what AI model to use to process your image. Sharpen for general sharpening, stabilized for shape correction and focus to correct minor focal blur. Well, to be honest, I've experimented with all of these and they all work well. So if you find you click on one, for example, it doesn't quite do it for you. By all means, experiment with the others. As I said earlier, I think the software tends to have a quick look at the image and choose which one it thinks is going to work best for the image. But you know, it may not always get it right. So it's a simple matter to click on the, um, uh, the image and make some changes that, that suit yourself. So if we come across to Sharpen, as always we expect to see a preview and again it's done a very good job. I think this is the, the technique that we used earlier on. And below that are um, sharpness and noise suppression sliders. So as you might expect, if you take the sharpness slider right the way down, once the preview is finished, it's not sharpened the image that much. If we take it back up to quite a high level, well, again, once the preview is finished, it's done a very, very good job. When you sharpen an image, as I said earlier, it does sharpen noise in the image as well. So the noise suppression slider is very useful for actually just doing what it says on the tin, uh, suppressing the noise. And you can experiment with that as well. Take this right the way over and compare. Yeah, if you look particularly in the areas of the sort of mid grey sky background, it has done quite a good level of noise suppression on there. One note of caution is that occasionally it's quite easy to over soften the image and it gives it a very kind of false plasticky look, and that's definitely something to be avoided. It's best to use software like this in fairly minor increments and you can always come back and, and um, modify the image if you wish to. So we'll take that back down again and the sharpness. And then just below that is a post-processing slider add grain. And again, if, if you use the noise suppression slider a bit heavily, um, it can 
make the image look very kind of, it's a term I use, sort of very plasticky and a little bit artificial. So you can actually add grain to the image. And let's just take it up quite a bit and see what happens. It's introducing a little bit of noise into the, um, the background again. So the idea is you've got three sliders here and every image will um, respond differently to this software. So the good thing is you can drag the sliders around in real time and you can assess the level of sharpening and noise suppression and even grain addition on your own images. And I think you'll find that um, once you've had a little play with the software, you'll get used to it very quickly. And as you can see from the, um, the slider here, it's, um, it does a really good job. So let's apply that to the image. We'll just sit back and wait for that to process. And we can zoom in a bit. And yeah, if we go back one stage. It's fairly subtle, but you really can see um, the, the detail popping out of the, the image. Now, you might say, how good is this compared to other software programs like, for example, Photoshop, PixInsight, Affinity Photo? They all have excellent sharpening routines in. But I think my impression of Topaz Sharpen AI, it works in a way that reminds me of deconvolution programs, which is a, a different processing routine that can be used to, again, extract very, very fine detail out of an image. And I think Sharpen AI kind of mimics that and it does that in a way that the other programs don't. So I, I think it's a very, very useful program. And you may find that if your images are taken under poor seeing, or maybe if the focus is poor, the program isn't so powerful. But if you're using the Telescope Live systems, it's quite likely that the data you'll be working on will be very well focused, very well tracked and taken under good seeing conditions. So you really will find that Topaz Sharp and AI will do a very good job on your images. As we can see here, you can see the before and after. It really does a good job. You may find that using Topaz Sharp and AI, that some artifacts are introduced into the image. If I zoom in here, just above the nebula, um, you can see some of these stars have got slightly dark centers. And we can kind of address this problem just by reverting the image back to an earlier state. And the way we do that is if we click back to this state here, this is um, where we converted the image into uh, the color file, but it's before we applied the uh, sharpen algorithm to, to the image. If we come up here and just click on the little box on the left hand side of this state and then come across to the Photoshop's toolbox and select the history brush and it's the tool with the, the paintbrush and a little reverse arrow on it. If you hold the cursor over the box you can see it comes up with history brush tool. And then you can choose an appropriate brush size to click on these stars and revert them back to an earlier state before topaz was applied. In this case I've got the opacity set right up to 100% which I don't normally do but in this case it just helps to revert the stars back to this earlier state and you can go across the image if there's any other stars that look a little bit weird it's very easy just to with a single click revert the images back to that earlier state and then once you're happy with that you just save the image. So that's a quick look at Topaz Sharpen AI and I hope you can see from uh, this image how well the software is actually working. In the next tutorial we'll look at another Topaz product which is called Topaz Denoise AI and as you might expect it's a very powerful software package for reducing noise in your images. So I'll see you in the next one.